Hello, everyone. Um, like Mama said, my name is Vanessa McKinney. I am a program manager with EPA's AgStar program. I've been with the program for almost two years at this point. Um, I'm really excited to be talking with you all today. Um, I have experience being a, a prior uh, extension agent with um, Cornell Cooperative Extension in upstate New York. So I know how um, connected everyone is on this call with their communities and being a resource for you all is, is my goal. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, the AgStar program is a partnership program between EPA and the USDA. Um, we focus on advancing um, anaerobic digestion as a means for manure management. Um, manure is a very valuable resource and we can get lots of co-benefits for that that I'll, I'll talk about in a bit. Um, strong ties with folks in the industry that work on developing these systems, implementing them, and sharing information and knowledge. Um, government agencies, NGOs, and universities, um, like the folks that are, are hosting um, us and the other panelists today. Um, and we're also getting out there in the community and sharing what we've learned to help those who are um, operating these systems and implementing them. Um, the presentation today, we're talking about RNG as well, renewable natural gas. Um, and in EPA, we have a number of resources to support RNG from many different sectors. Um, we have a landfill methane outreach program and our methane challenge and natural gas star programs, which then also ensures that RNG that's developed from either landfill gas or anaerobic digestion, and in some cases, food waste processing or wastewater processing um, makes it into a pipeline that uh, is more effective and efficient at delivering natural gas to where consumers use it without um, unnecessary leaks. Um, methane emissions in the manure um, management sector um, total uh, 82 million metric tons for CO2 equivalent a year, and that's a small fraction of the U.S.'s overall methane emissions. Um, I mentioned our uh, landfill um, outreach program, so landfills have a higher percentage. Um, the operation of natural gas systems have a higher percentage of methane emissions, um, and our programs at EPA are focused on um, managing that. Um, I will note that one, pro one sort of methane emission source that the AgStar program does not touch on is enteric fermentation. Um, there's a number of, you know, developments taking place in this market, um, different sorts of feed additives that can help reduce that fraction of enteric fermentation. But for our purposes today and for AgStar's purposes, we focus on manure management. And a basic uh, anaerobic digestion system starts with a unit in the top left corner that you see here. Um, our manure resource goes into the system and outside of that, we then get biogas and other digested materials. Um, we can separate out the liquid fraction um, and use that for fertilizer. Some folks these days are also um, further processing that liquid um, fraction of digestate into more advanced fertilizer product, products with advanced treatments. Um, but overall, um, the benefit to the farmer um, or the system operator is um, the fertilizer component, a soil amendment, and depending on what type of bedding your livestock operation uses, um, you have a high quality an animal bedding product that can um, uh, replace the need to purchase um, new, new products. Um, but when we talk about that biogas product, um, a focus of our presentation today, um, we need to do a couple things before we can use it. And the first is to remove um, most of the moisture. Um, we can then uh, <clears throat> make sure that some of the products that is um, found in biogas, like siloxanes or sulfurs, that can be very damaging to equipment. Um, and um, not very helpful for humans to breathe or be around is removed um, before we then compost it. Um, 
Those with biogas systems uh, can generate electricity that they can use on their farm um, and also use waste heat from those generators to heat out buildings um, or other animal um, facilities or um, processing equipment for either upgrading that biogas to RNG or um, you know, further processing uh, products on the farm like milk um, or other items that a farm might be interested in heating. Uh, so as you know, um, EPA, we're part of the federal government and um, we've got a new administration. Um, our USDA Secretary Vilsack, prior to his time um, in this new administration, worked in the Obama administration and he's very supportive of anaerobic digestion and supported the development of our biogas roadmap, which is um, a document that we worked on at EPA, along with the Department of Energy to um, identify barriers and roadblocks to, to developing um, more anaerobic digestion systems in the US. Um, EPA has a new administrator, Michael Regan. Um, he hails from North Carolina's Department of Environmental Quality and um, during his tenure there, there are a number of projects um, uh, supporting RNG or developing and refining biogas into RNG um, that have been um, making their way through the Department of Environmental Quality's permitting process. So I would imagine that Mr. Reagan is um, familiar with um, anaerobic digestion and renewable natural gas as well. Um, also broadly, um, the current administration has put out a number of executive orders focused on methane and um, anaerobic digestion um, because we're using our manure resource to create more methane to utilize for energy or other needs. Um, we're focusing on um, getting our information, AgStar, and getting our community mobilized um, to put in public input um, through the USDA's Federal Register Notice that I've, I've noted here on this slide, um, that anaerobic digestion um, is a really well-defined um, system. We have measurable, verif verifiable um, benefits from utilizing these systems, and um, we look towards supporting um, these executive orders in the future to ensure our um, agriculture community um, receives benefits um, from you know, all the strides they've made in this um, market. So um, over the last number of years, um, the number of anaerobic digesters have increased just like from 2017 to the present. Most of this growth has been focused on um, RNG projects and projects that um, are capturing benefits through the low carbon fuel standard, which is a program outside of California. There also are um, a number of other incentives in, in other states. Um, at the national level, um, EPA's Office of, Envir of um, Transportation and Air Quality offers a program for this renewable fuel standard, and they provide um, renewable um, credits for projects um, that generate um, renewable fuels. And I know some of the other panelists will, will talk about um, those incentives later on, but um, they're fueling growth in um, the development of anaerobic digesters and biogas upgrading to RNG projects. Um, AgStar, we track the number of anaerobic digesters, biogas systems um, in the United States. Um, we just updated our database um, an, on Monday, and we know of 273 existing biogas systems in the United States. Uh, prior analysis that we did in 2018, um, utilizing USDA's census of farm, um, census of farms, uh, we estimate the potential of 8,000 um, biogas systems and anaerobic digesters in the United States, just based on a simple um, analysis that uh, 2,000 
um, swine or 500 cows are uh, sort of a tipping point where having an anaerobic digester system is most um, economic, economically feasible um, to run those systems. We're also seeing a lot of um, development around the RNG business model to access, um, like I mentioned earlier, low carbon fuel standard in California um, that perhaps is opening up the opportunity for anaerobic digesters and biogas systems to exist on sort of smaller farms where maybe they don't perhaps meet that initial level of um, 500 cows or 2,000 swine, a uh, number of dairies can join together in what's called a cluster and then inject that um, renewable natural gas that their pro project has created into a pipeline um, to access um, those credits. So we're seeing development in this marketplace. So Agstar as a program, we support this industry with outreach and education. Um, we've put out a number of um, documents in the last year. Our third edition project development handbook. Um, this is a hundred page resource, uh, start to finish of what to think about when you're considering an anaerobic digestion system um, for your facility and questions to sort of ask yourself. And then it enumerates a number of other um, items that your facility might consider based on the type of um, livestock operation you have, um, if you wish to co-digest food waste, um, and then a number of those co-benefit products that I, I spoke of earlier about you know, utilizing bedding or fertilizer and any other um, regulations or things to consider as you sort of fit a project to your needs. Our operator guidebook is about an 80 page document and that's designed for operators who are interacting with anaerobic digester or biogas systems on a day-to-day -day basis so that they can ensure those systems operate safely and effectively and also ensure that they sort of address issues that have cropped up or um, the hope is that um, they can manage their system so effectively they, they won't have issues crop up. Our AD risk analysis checklist is for folks who are thinking of um, moving forward with an anaerobic digester project. Um, we've got, it's, it's in the name a checklist um, to move through different sections of consideration as you develop a project. And these the, the order of the checklist is designed to correlate to um, a USDA um, grant and loan application so that you have all the documentation and information you need to proceed with a loan or grant application um, to put your best foot forward. Um, and we also have a biogas toolkit. Um, this is a web-based resource that helps you find um, resources related to biogas generation um, not only at agricultural facilities, but um, at wastewater facilities, uh, landfills, um, and other options. So in addition to all of the other um, just technical information that I just mentioned, um, we have a number of project profiles. These are individual farms that have anaerobic digesters and are successfully operating them and how they built out their systems to fit their needs. Um, I mentioned our market opportunities report that um, we estimated there's a potential for over 8,000 units in the United States to be developed um, to, to manage our manure. Uh, and um, we do have a separate RNG and agriculture page, which um, refers to, uh, and I mentioned uh, RIN, credits from the Office of Transportation and Air Quality. You can find more information about that. We get a lot of questions about D3 and D5 RINs, um, and that information is available on that resource. And then um, obviously we participate in webinars like this. Um, we have past webinars posted so that you can learn more about anaerobic digestion systems. And we certainly invite you to, to visit our website, subscribe to our newsletter, um, 
where we provide um, some sort of one-off opportunities in this field. Um, I know there, there will be a opportunity from EPA this summer through um, the Office of Land and Emergency Management for a grant to support anaerobic digestion projects. So if you subscribe to our newsletter, we'll send out information about that opportunity when it becomes available.